out a little bit more. So when you render things, it's, you can really simplify everything. I'm sure all you guys know how to render a sphere, right? Yeah. Well, you can render a sphere well, you can render anything. So you have your sphere. I'll do this in the process if I find the piece coming too too confusing. If I can pick that initial color and then my brightness right here, I'm just going to go a little brighter. My brush be big, get smaller, go a little bit brighter. Everything that you see on, on a rendered sphere like this is going to appear everywhere on your character, just in smaller degrees, whether it's squished or not. You're, you're going to have a you know, mid-tone, you're going to have a light, you're going to have a highlight. And most of the time you will have some reflected light. So you have your Mid-tone, your light, highlight, core shadow, reflected light. That's basically going to happen everywhere. If I was to change this, you know, warp this thing to something else, <coughs> it's still going to be uh, relative to whatever shape it is. Still gonna have your light, highlight, mid tone, this kind of core shadow, and reflective light. When I'm just, whenever I'm painting something, I'm going into the face right here. I'm just gonna remember those key, key things. So when I, whenever I render things out in that degree, a lot of times I'll just get an airbrush and I'll set the hardness up as much as. I feel comfortable with. And then I can render in that regard for, for quite a while. So it's, it seems like his face should be a little darker. I'm going to get a multiply layer and just add a base. But it's easy to change the color later on. I'm going to keep, keep this brown as a piece. As if maybe his head is brown and then there's a soft transition from brown to blue or whatever. So. <coughs> and then on a new layer now, I can, so this would be my, my base tone. Brightness, bring it down, that'll be some kind of shadow. I can bring my brightness up, lower the saturation, and that's going to be the highlight. So, just with three tones, you can render out something um, and have it look incredibly realistic with just three tones. That was a, a concept I learned years ago, and I didn't understand it until like yesterday. Because <laughs> it's so simple. I was, I was taking these, these um, pastel figure painting classes, and the teacher, Charles Hugh, who's a, a great figure instructor, he was like, okay, I want everybody to paint your character with three tones. And I have my awesome box of pastels with all these amazing colors in it. I'm like, but I don't want to use these colors, man. I want to use like it's like just just use three tones to begin with. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Why I'm seeing more than three tones on, on anything. Anything you look at, you're gonna see more than, than three tones. But what he was trying to get across was that all you need to do initially is render out the forms using three tones. 
So if I want to render this guy's skin crinkly and muscle facial features, all I need to use is three tones initially. I can bring in the variation later on. I just need my mid-tone, my, my light, and my shadow. that for a while and communicate in realistic form. And then later on, yeah, you can bring in other colors and other textures, but you need that base to, to work with. So since this is a zombie bat thing, I made this kind of bat nose, and I'm going to eat away at it right here, using just that real skin tone. Add some more shadow on the side of the nose. I'm assuming I have this light coming from the top. And then eventually you start putting in your lighter lights. Darks. still going to have the basic basic elements of the form. It's going to have the mid-tone, which I can put down here. It's going to have kind of highlights. It's going to have some kind of shadow. for a while, it's a very uh, easy principle to, to remember, but sometimes you get carried away and you want to put in all this, all this different kinds of color, detail, you just always need to go back to the, the basics. It's adding that, that crisp element. I had a lot of soft painting going on by adding that simple circle custom shape, really bringing in that, that, that focus a little bit more. So, at this stage, you're really relying on your painting skills. There's nothing, nothing fancy going on, there's no custom brushes or anything. Light rather, and then it's highlighted. You know, what's the material this is made out of? It's going to determine how sharp the highlight is. Same down here, this highlight is indicating this bottom rim of these, of these 
God. The more I detail his face, the more the focus will go to the face. Meaning I can read other things a little bit more suggestive. figure everything out, figure out those weapons, exact costume details, things like that. Alright, so he's a vampire, right? So he likes to eat people, he likes blood. A great um, thing to do blood is he is overlay layer. So I got a new layer, I'm gonna set it to overlay. Now I can get like some kind of texture and brush. This is crazy. Look at that. It's a crazy looking brush. I made this out of like these watercolors and I, I did some abstract watercolor for the purpose of this, scanned it in and made it into a brush. Again, that can be changed again if, if uh, you're doing work and your client says, well, it looks orange to me, it's supposed to be blood, then kind of, you know how to compensate for that. You change it with a color layer or an adjustment layer. So I actually didn't accidentally close it. Sometimes when you're not looking at your keyboard, it's uh, So always save, you know, it didn't crash, but it's, um, if it wants to open it in paint or not, so that's what you're doing. Constantly save, I'm constantly having my fingers, at, you know, saving. And you always want to be, you know, at control Z or command the alt, your um, shift, you always want to be near those, those keys. That's the main version. Yes, I know. Okay. So I'm going to collapse all of that. text 
textures, you can bring in different kinds of textures to help unify the image. That's good. So you're shooting straight up. <laughs> right. That's kind of <laughs> like I know where I know where the kids are. Relax too, like yeah. I'm safe. Yeah. I'm talking about, watch this, fellas. Hey, watch this. It's like the eye of the storm. The yeah. safest part. It's high yeah. right underneath them. Are you watching it? Here we go. So this is providing a different kind of contrast where um, <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> I like a whole group of these guys, like they all they put a girl there just like so yeah. Oh, this kid. It kind of looks like they run with them. To be honest, yeah, it kinda looks like totally. it's his little like army. Yeah, yeah but they're all they work with him. And so these, yeah, these I found on DeviantArt. Rush Easy is a lot of nice ones too. Rush Easy. Yeah, there's lots of sites where you can get these, these custom shapes and brushes and things like that. So, it's great about, yeah, these army ones. This is I like how they're all pointing their guns at him. Yeah. We run with him, but just in case he decides to turn it, <laughs> exactly. we're going to shoot BBs out before he kills us. Yeah. Not the better. <laughs> and because the, those are all flat colors, use the airbrush to get them out of the way a little bit. It's not really about them, but it's good to see them. <laughs> He's a part of theirs. Um. Yeah, exactly. One wrong step. He's killed like a kid. He's gentle. <laughs> he looks like a gentle giant. So let's see other little things you can put in to give, give motion. So if you want to use some illustration or some kind of cover, you want to you frame it, not, not blatantly, but like vignette this. <coughs> getting a multiply layer. And just keeping the eye from going off of the image. a momentum of movement because he's facing to the right so he's about to not even take a step but he's just adjusting his stance. He's about to aim at something. Exactly. It's about to, it's oh, there's a the tank. You guys missed out that tank. So still, the, the focus is mainly on the head because that's mostly, mostly rendered a lot of the focus will go here because of all that detail. So it would probably take another several hours to really detail this thing out so it's, it's worthy of print. But back to anatomy. Knowing how the arm looks on this side, like where is this body set connecting to? It's, it's connecting up under the, you know, the, the scapula and wrapping around the humerus and then attaching to the forearm bump right there. So just 
knowing those things is a public looking and more realistic. So these wings can stay suggestive, but wings are, you know, like an arm. You know, these fingers are the long tendons that are coming off of it. So again, it all relates back to, to human anatomy. Still, you know, it's still pretty abstract. If you zoom in, it's like, what is that? It's very abstract. But if you want to keep your focus, that's not so abstract. It's clearly. Looking at a dog's ears with sunlight behind it, we get a lot of uh, you know when it's illuminated, so you get that real bright. Translucency. Yeah, you get the translucency. That's another term. I'm totally forgetting it. Um, let's see here. I can do that with um, overlay layers are great for doing reflective light. Reflective light helps. is great because you can, you can darken with it like so. And then you can also you know, light things up. It's definitely more orange on the screen, but you guys get the idea of how you can get that going. If this was a uh, book, what would it be titled? Any suggestions? Hmm. Anyone? Viewer? Mike and me. Mike and me. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that that's Mike. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Just some name of a guy. And All right, yeah. what, what's another one? I like that idea, though. Mike and his friends. Mike and his buddies. Mike and pals. All right. No, that's good. Or something in company. That's good, because it's kind of like a military company. Yeah. Frankenbeans. Yeah. Uh, so Charlie and Company. <laughs> All right. So just for now, you can. Great. Charlie denotes because he's Charlie. The enemy. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, maybe he was. It seems to me like he's one of those military dudes, and something happened to him, and he just became this big old like monster, and that's why he's still around with him. Okay, not natural. No, no, that that's human. human. That's human, but so we all look like on the inside, isn't that weird? So by changing uh, your put it on fucking plate and fart. <laughs> you do have that. That's where I said it. It's right there, it's at the top. I don't know why you oh, have that, but it's fuck plate. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of messy in bits. Whoa, someone just ran off. Someone. Didn't make it. It's 
like that X-Men scene where he, he pulls her through the wall. I can't go through walls. Let's see by putting a bond on, kind of uh, put a nice finishing touch. I like how it says it right now. I know, that's how they Is that how they do spaces, probably? Yeah, that's so the young. There you go, that's fine. Oh no, that's the ant. Yeah. Alright, another name. You guys are clever. My buddy is me. <laughs> what Greg Edwards? Greg Edwards. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Greg. Um, Greg. Holy shit! Oh, he's our friend. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> Who'd you read over the summer? Holy shit! He's our friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna go. We initially make it the entire title. We decide. Yeah. <laughs> Steampunk Victorian vampire oh, yeah, well, zombie right. assassin. Right. See, I, but even something like this, I mean, if you were to put this up online, uh, people would probably want to read it. Yeah, they'd be like, what is, is that? Is that, is that, is that when's it coming out? <laughs> <laughs> put that there. Comic-Con 2011, put this out, it's really freak out. They really would, too. They'd be like, oh my god, what? No, 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 just at the bottom on the right, put, put James Cameron real small. <laughs> the color scheme just Starring makes you the Yeah. Starring Mr. Bean. Or, but I am not seeing this. Guillermo del Toro? Yeah, put that down. <laughs> you could probably sell the poster. Yeah, it's gonna be so good. Yeah, it's gonna be so good. Guillermo del Toro presents a Quentin Tarantino film, <laughs> starring John Travolta. What? <laughs> It's kind of like what was that? Um, Tropic, uh, Tropic Thunder yeah, meets <laughs> something yeah. else. It just looks like they're down there. Yeah. So there we go. I'll, I'll open it up to Q and A. If you guys want this file, I'll, I'll, if you have a flash drive. I want it to. Or leave. I can leave it. You can put it on the comment. Leave it with. Yeah. yeah. Just put it on the internet. We'll all just grab it from there. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, what you want to do with the board, obviously, sign it. Sign it. Have, a lot of artists have their little uh, signature brush or something. Yeah, it's it, it's exactly like the brush, or it's a it's a custom shape. You know? Yeah, you stamp it or whatever. Yeah. But um, I used to have one, and then after a while I just started uh, doing that. Just, you, know, you find a good position for it. Want to keep it, you know, just a little subtle. Less people can read it, the better it is. <laughs> Some kind of contact, you know, maybe your website. Um, Empire Steam, I would totally want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of getting kind of depressed now, it's not going to uh, But that's the thing, you, you create the stuff that you like, that you would like to see, you know, and hopefully someday the, the right people will see it and be inspired and say, hey, we want, we want to bring you on to make this thing that you, you came up with. And of course, you know, you can put textures and things like that to make it, uh, you know, a little bit more warm. You just get like a warm texture offline, off some kind of a warm fabric or warm paper. Throw it over this and you know, just to give it that warm look. And it's kind of a uh, Kind of done in a way. You don't need to go in and render everything out. These these guys here are just silhouettes. They're just suggestive. These legs weren't even worked out, but it, it doesn't really matter. It's, you know, this thing is interesting enough. That's interesting enough. This guy is. So. 
some stuff that was NDA if we shut the camera off you can, you can show? Um, well it was kind of all on that reel. Oh you no. Know, so yeah. He just won't explain this so he can. Need um, to know basis. I don't even think I have them on this yet. Yeah, I have them all up at home. I try not to take them with me in case. Can I can do the show? Is there anything use. you're working on now you can tell us about? Um, I'm actually currently co-directing an episode of The Simpsons which is mm -hmm. very different than this. <laughs> but, uh, much it, it's what I started doing. Um, it was my first job as an animator on The Simpsons and I didn't really, didn't really know how to do anything else. I just knew how to draw on you know, paper, paper, pencil. I only got into Photoshop probably about five and a half years ago when I realized I didn't want to draw. So working on this show now, and it's, uh, it gives me a little bit more freedom to work on other freelance projects, which is great. The thing about The Simpsons is that it's, it's set in stone, and they actually have money to uh, pay. Part of the problem with the entertainment business as a whole, nobody really wants to pay very, they're trying to get it for free, which is why a lot of the studios will go to schools and try to recruit um, students, which is great to, to do a lot of spec work, and, and they will. So for now, um, I'll just be co-directing this episode. It comes out in, in February, so it's a team. See how easy it is to draw? It's actually one of the hardest characters. To, or The Simpsons is a very particular style. There's all these rules and things like how far. Measurements and stuff? Yeah, like you know, where to put this nose that the eye always you know, bisects the nose. You know, how long do you, is the muzzle supposed to be? Um, on the top, it's like you know, three noses here, two and a half here. And all of these, these incredible rules that are annoying, but it kind of become second, second nature. And so it definitely allows me to get it done quickly, and then I can uh, freelance do stuff like this. But it's harder to get this stuff made because you need to either be uh, your own production company or have friends in a production company, but still, it's easy to pitch. Like, I can make this into a presentation and take it into a pitch, which I've done many times, and they're like, it's fantastic, it's great, we'll call you back. And then, <laughs> and all <laughs> some money. I swear, it's crazy, no matter how cool the project is, yeah. And it always comes down to money. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. There's that. There's that. There's that. There's that. That pays the bills. <laughs> this, yeah, this pays the bills and this lets me do that, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> but there's a lot of really good artists on The Simpsons who, are, who do the same thing. They work on The Simpsons, it's easy for them by day, and then at night they do crazy yeah. You can just shove that like inside an exposed part of a like, robot leg, it would still make sense. Yeah, exactly. You should so. turn Homer's face. This is something with that texture. And just just put it over like multiple. The Homer you want to, like, the Homer that you would like to see. Oh. <laughs> and then bring that to Matt and he'll be Let's like, get him. out of my <laughs> office. Yeah, I, mean, I would totally get You should that. just subliminally put like Homer's face somewhere in like the vampire thing and show it to Matt and he'll be like, I like this for some reason. Oh, <laughs> uh, you mean this one? Yeah, just put it somewhere. Maybe maybe make Homer one of the military dudes down there at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't want to. <laughs> I usually don't do the Simpson stuff. Um, we've done a lot of experimental Simpsons uh, stuff. We've seen some of the toys.
employees that we've made. But um, yeah, I mean, this can be. Uh, I usually don't do Simpsons outside of Simpsons. So, yeah, You're understandable. Home. Yeah, yeah, as much as I would like to. It's fun, like at uh, you know restaurants or bars, you get a lot of free, free stuff. One time or several times, I've done just do those on napkins, and the waiter, like, they, they just fall to their faces. They're like, "Did you, did you leave that here? Where'd you get that?" I'm like, "Oh, the, the guy here before he left that." <laughs> He's like, "You keeping that?" I'm like, "I think I'm gonna." <laughs> I'll, I'll give it to you. It was just bill. A, it was a scribble, like what you guys saw. It's crazy. I was gonna freak out over it. I'm like, um, uh, you can have it. I did it. Yeah, but it's because of what you're doing. I'm like, if we drew it, someone's like, oh, right. Well, it's nice. I said, do you, do you want do you want me to sign it my name or do you want me to sign it Matt Green? And they're like, who's that? Who's that Green? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to put an A and R in the ear? Um, so, any other any other questions on, on this technique? See, this is kind of becoming a train. So, yeah, already just from not even thinking about it, it's become something of a train to which I can now get. Those are some stuff like that. I think I've seen the stuff like that. Did you make those or did you? Yeah. All of these I made from. Yeah. Can you show us some of those more elaborate ones? Yeah. Like these or the alien? Okay. Any of them, just like just, just stamp them or whatever, just so you can see what some of them are. Because right. like that one, we when you first started out, yeah. you were showing us that one alien one, it's like just crazy detail. Yeah, these. So these I've used on. Just in the same way, starting with um, objects. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just like a couple of spheres, you know. See, and squish spheres in there, and then applying the um, plastic wrap filter on it. You know, do that really quick. To this thing out up to a certain point. So it's you know quite a bit cleaner than this. It probably take another ten minutes or so. Start adding and erasing interesting things. So you know, this thing already has taken on this menacing quality because it has this hook. Spend the time in making the brush or the asset or the, the custom shape, and you can reuse it uh, quite a bit. to filters and 
slide a plastic wrap filter on it. So the filter, I'll go with the filter gallery, rotate that. So it was on when I last left it. You can see what it did to it. It almost makes like this, this flat uh, two and a half D uh, texture. Type. Yeah, as ZBrush would do it. But in ZBrush, you can actually paint like this from the get <coughs> So immediately it makes it 3D and adds this texture on it. It's really, really quite interesting. It's probably important to paint in uh, an opacity or the softness, like so that way you get the different layers when you do the brush strokes, because if it's all one kind of solid without yeah. fading layers, it probably doesn't do all those different texture brush. Yeah, exactly. But this you know, already is becoming something new on the side and then bring it up. Add, just like I did before, add certain little lights inside of it. attracted a lot of people to their site. Then once people heard it, it was like, eh. Other brushes yeah, and shapes. And I took these in the painter also. Like, like taking hey, thank you, All right. Nice like taking point. his gun um chains or whatever that you've already done to him and kind of bringing them into the shape. Right. Exactly. Do you respond to your emails? Like if somebody sent something for your city? Sometimes. Sometimes. Do you, do you yeah. answer your, your phone calls? I know, right? <laughs> Just asking because yeah. there is some stuff I'd like to all right, yeah, yeah, someone send it out to me, and, uh, and yeah, I do tend to get on on busy care. sometimes, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do my best. All right. It looks yeah. kind of like an alien statue looking up to the sky, with no, like, face, but yeah, the head shape. The head, yeah. Head, yeah. Head, yeah. yeah, so this yeah, thing can just sorry. become many different things, you know, I can duplicate it and do, like, a symmetrical Rorschach Rorsch test thing. That's what I was thinking when I first saw it. It looks like yeah. a Geiger stuff. Yeah. It's definitely an influence. So I've made, let's see. You can see some of the alien looking ships he had down there, the black ones. Yeah. So that's another one I made. 
So by combining and recombining brushes you made, it's going to keep your, your work original to your own style. And it's, it's just going to be incredibly efficient. That, I can have something totally new. I can now make a brush out of this if I wanted to. Or, you know, look closely at it and see all the horrifying things in there. That would look cool in the center of the vampire or whatever it is. Oh, our part. chest plate. Wow, even there it looks pretty good. <laughs> I know, just the big Just wall. put that on the overlay yeah. background. New movie coming out. <laughs> What's it about? You have no idea. That's alright, that's like the event and Lost and all the other shows that are out now anyway. Yeah. Just, you don't have to tell people what it is. That looks tough. Yeah, lighten it, invert it, do what it takes to bring it to the scene. Yeah, that's nice. So there's, you know, there's levels, there's curves used to lighten and dark things. But it would take a little bit of a good Oh, God. It's a good dress. That is awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to be, to get surprised by your work. You can do that and then just like erase out the middle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If I didn't want to erase, I would just mask it, but in this case. Oh. <laughs> I got a jellyfish hat. Yeah. Those are some gnarly looking horns now. Yeah, they could uh, yeah, they totally can go in. in the Matrix that find your ship? Sentinels. Tunnel. Sentinels? Yeah. It looks a lot like Sentinel to me, like tails and stuff. That's cool. Tim Robbins is it? It was uh, Tim Curry. Tim Curry. Right. Yeah, Tim Curry. This little English dude plays this horrific devil character, kind of scariest looking devil ever. No, yeah. it was frightening. It was amazing. That movie's great. Yeah, you guys got to see it. Ridley Scott directed. Amazing. You can do a Tom Cruise. No. Yeah, Tom Cruise. Good movie though. Very good. I heard Tom, you tried to like buy up all the, the movies and burn them. You didn't want people to see them. That sucks. That was a good movie, man. Yeah, it was a fantasy movie. It's probably like a lot of money buying them up and selling them to them. <laughs> really haven't seen that movie? That movie's really good. The yeah, unicorn with his little trolls here. Yeah. It's really, really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. It's 
that, that creature that popped out of the swamp. Yeah, I do the thing? little witch thing with the long movie. fingers here. Yeah. Uh, all kinds of visual effects. Yeah. Awards. We do sometimes, but we do it. We do with the uh, red engine, but Austin's unappreciative, so we'll never do it again. I am not unappreciative. So no more Justin Sweet for you.